We will find out. Uh, tonight, we have the very first public match between Quanta, an artificial intelligence that has been trained to play quiz ball toss-ups. Not bonuses, just toss-ups so far. Uh, and they will be taking on a team of our staffers who have uh, graciously accepted our invitation to represent humanity in this battle to the death. The death part wasn't part of the invitation. Also, as a bit of an added twist, you as the audience can also compete in this match because we will be using rounds 15 and 16 from today's preliminaries. So you'll have a chance to see where you got the question versus the computer or who had the worst neg on it, you or the computer. What? Um, we obviously, the question you have is why are we letting our staffers play if they've read these questions? These staffers have been sequestered for rounds 15 and 16. They have not seen these questions. They will be completely new to them. So the rules of the game, this is going to be standard NAQT quiz bowl. It's going to accept a match of 40 toss-ups. PowerPoints are available. Negs are available. Uh, but no bonuses. Actually, does the computer know how to protest? Uh, no, it does not. <laughs> All right. So no one's going to mistake it for a human player <laughs> in the near future. Uh, just if you didn't hear that, the computer cannot protest, so neither can the humans. Uh, and the computer can also not be prompted. However, humans will be prompted according to normal rules. Um, the, uh, uh, humanities, sticking their thumbs out for humanity today, we have Colby Burnett. Ben Ingram. <laughs> Alex Jacob. <laughs> and Kristen Sauceville. <laughs> Before we do the match, uh, the two researchers that we have here who built Quanta uh, have a few words to say about the history and the science behind the project. Uh, so I would like to introduce uh, Jordan Boydgrabber, a uh, former quiz bowler, now at the University of Colorado Boulder, who also moderate the match, and Mohit Iyer, also a former quiz bowler, and now at the University of Maryland. Uh, I'm first going to introduce a little bit of who we are and how the system works so you can understand what's going on. And hopefully, uh, this might also get you excited about computer science and machine learning. Uh, that's, that's also one of our goals here. Um, and then afterwards, uh, after the match and after uh, our brief discussion, uh, we'll uh, answer your questions uh, to the best of our ability. Okay, so first, what is quanta? Um, one question that I often get is, how is this different from Watson? So as you know, uh, in Jeopardy, you have to wait until the end of the question to answer. And in fact, this is enforced strictly by Jeopardy. If you buzz in before the question is completed, uh, you're locked out from answering again, from buzzing again. Uh, Watson had a significant advantage. It didn't have to carefully time when Alex was going to finish his sentences. It didn't have to watch yellow lights. It got an electrical impulse a millisecond. It could answer the question. And as you know, through uh, playing many rounds of Quiz Bowl today, uh, in Quiz Bowl, you have to decide when you know enough to answer the question. You can interrupt the question. And so from a machine learning perspective, uh, that makes this problem a little bit harder than playing Jeopardy, and I think more interesting as well. It has connections to other avenues of research that I'll talk about uh, in a little bit. And another difference is that we're not IBM. Uh, we don't have a cluster of computers backstage. We have a wimpy little laptop. Uh, and so as a result, we had to do some uh, engineering uh, hacks uh, to make this work at test time on a single computer. And uh, Mohit did a lot of that work, and uh, there's some clever research behind that that we'll talk about in a second. Uh, so we're both former quiz bowlers. Uh, I played at Caltech and Princeton. Uh, Mohit was on a championship team at this tournament, HSNCT, uh, in 2008. Uh, putting these dates on the slide made me feel really old. Uh, OK, so how does Quanta work? Uh, we're going to do this at a pretty high level. I don't want to bore you. Um, but there's 
pretty much two main steps to how Quanto works. So the first is um, generate a set of candidate guesses. And so our data set for Quanta is pretty much the last 20 years of Quiz Bowl, most questions written, thanks to NAQT. So we have on the order of uh, 100,000 questions and uh, 14,000 unique answers. So you can imagine, given a question, selecting one out of 14,000 is a really hard task. So the first part of our, our system here uh, goes down from 14,000, filters the set to 200. So we select the 200 most likely candidates given the question. In the next part, we go through and rank these 200 candidates and then decide if we're uh, confident enough in our highest ranked candidate to buzz in or not. Um, the alternative is, of course, to wait. And all the machine learning details are in these two papers that uh, Jordan and I have written together. So if you're interested, you can read them for more details. Um, but we'll go through a pretty high-level overview of each of these two phases of our pipeline. So I guess the general idea behind um, the guess uh, candidate generation phase is that we want to map both questions and answers into the same geometric space, and then we select the answer that's closest to the question. Um, and so here, uh, if you can see this, well, I guess you don't have to, this is in a question about the country Qatar. Um, and so our goal is to map this question into this uh, three-dimensional space as an example here. And so, we have all our answers in the space as well. So Qatar and Bahrain are reasonable candidates for this question. Gummy bears and Pokemon are not reasonable. Um, and so what we want to do is map the question into the space somewhere close to the reasonable answers, but far away from the, uh, the obviously incorrect answers. Um, and so w all we give our model is quiz bowl question and answer pairs. We don't tell, we don't have, uh, we don't tell it that, you know, Qatar is a country or that Bahrain is close to Qatar. It learns all of these things from just the, uh, the text of the question. So in particular, it learns here that Arabian, Persian, Gulf, and Kingdom, which are words from this question, are important in positioning the question in the space close to the correct answer. Uh, okay, so probably can't see this either, but one interesting byproduct of uh, this phase is that our model is able to learn things like, uh, so this is a model trained on only history questions, and so it, it manages to cluster these answers in the history uh, data set based on the type. So we've zoomed in here on the cluster of US presidents. Um, which it learns all by itself. Uh, the top left here, we have the first few presidents, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and John Adams. Um, and then if you move in a clockwise fashion, you sort of step through time. So 18th to 19th to 20th century here. Um, so this is pretty interesting because, again, our model just gets access to the text of the questions, um, but somehow it's able to learn things like uh, time in office and other things like that. Okay, so um, uh, that's, that's the first phase of our, our pipeline. So now, given our 200 candidate guesses, how do we decide which one is the best? And how do we decide if we're confident enough to buzz in? Um, so here we have a question on a good man is hard to find by Flannery O'Connor. Um, and we have some guesses that, that our model has uh, given us. So, uh, a good man is hard to find is the fifth guess in our list of 200 guesses. But how, how do we decide that we want to buzz in um, on a good man is hard to find? So uh, in this part of our system, we basically extract a bunch of features from both the guess and the text. And so um, in the question, it mentions the name Red Sammy, Red Sammy um, character in the story. And so we find that Red Sammy appears in three questions about a good man is hard to find and in no other questions. So it's obviously indicative of the answer um, and an important name. Um, similarly, Grandmother's Objections appears in the Wikipedia page for a good man is hard to find. And we also do a bunch of sanity checks like a good man is hard to find is not present in the actual text of the question because otherwise it wouldn't be the answer. 
Um, and so in the end, we put all these features into a classifier, and that decides when to buzz or when to wait for more text. Um, so just as a demonstration, um, we see here the input, this man won the battle. Um, and so at this point, our model has extracted 200 guesses and ranked them. But like, who would buzz in on this man won the battle? That's like a guaranteed neg. Um, and the, the model here has a 2% confidence in its highest, uh, highest ranked guess of Tokugawa. So <laughs> it, if it buzzed in here, it would uh, neg 98% of the time, according to this. Uh, so, so uh, good enough, it decides to wait. Um, now it actually hears a uniquely identifying clue. This man won the Battle of Zella over Pontus, etc. Um, but the right answer, Julius Caesar, is it only has 9% confidence in this answer at this time. Uh, so 9% is obviously not good enough either, and so it decides to wait again. Um, and so finally it gets to, for 10 points, name this Roman. And when it sees the word Roman, it becomes 90% confident that Julius Caesar is the correct answer. And it buzzes in and gets it correct. So I guess just wanted to emphasize that this all comes from our data set of like 20 years of quiz bowl questions. And our model hopefully has a pretty good idea now of when to buzz and when to wait to hear more. Although, I guess we'll see in the competition how well it actually does. And so now I want to talk a little bit more about uh, why we're confident uh, that we can beat some humans, uh, maybe not these four. Another student at the University of Maryland, Ha Ha, who is co-devised by Hal Dalmay, uh, we built a uh, question answering app uh, that, so that people could play Quiz Bowl online uh, back uh, five years ago. And uh, this was fairly popular. Uh, we had it open for a two week period. Uh, it was so popular that there were bootleg copies of it made quickly thereafter, one of which is Proto Bowl, which you may be aware of. Uh, and from this, we have a bunch of data about how people play Quiz Bowl. Uh, and uh, in some of our earlier work, uh, looking just at history questions, uh, we're able to beat 80% of humans. Uh, and in fact, it can beat me, which was a, a sort of bittersweet moment, uh, because I used to think that I was good at history questions. Maybe I'm not so good anymore. Um, but until today, our system has never faced off uh, face to screen against human opponents. And so that's what we uh, have come to. Uh, so we'll have 40 questions, as R said, no bonuses. Uh, because you have heard these questions in round 15 and 16, please do not say the answer out loud. Uh, do not help your human comrades. Uh, and so with that, let's bring up the human opponents.